Hi everyone! In this video I'm going to show you how to use logistic regression and how to understand the coefficients. So I'm going to use this data set that you can download from this URL, it's in my GitHub account. And basically this is a database that tries to estimate the probability of being admitted in an American university. And you have a rank from one from bottom universities to four top universities, let's say Ivy League or whatever. And you have different metrics. So GPA is uh, the, the result of this exam, the grade point average, and GRE, the graduate record examination. Okay. So let's take a look at this data set. So we have these four columns. Admit should be a categorical one because it's the one that I'm trying to predict. And rank should be also a categorical one, a factor. So I'm going to actually I'm going to translate also admit and here admit. Okay, so here we go. Let's let's plot a summary. GRE ranges from 220 to 800, and GPA from 226 to 4. Okay. So next step, if I want to do a fair comparison between parameters, what I'm going to do is tr try to normalize. So the first step is try to plot everything. You can use this function plot data framing in the library that we provide with the course, and it's going to give you uh, basically a rough idea of how how the category is distributed between ad in admit, for instance, so there's a categorical value, and you have much more zeros than ones, and this is a, can be a problem, and, and I have another video on class imbalance. Here we have another categorical value, and this is case a rank, but I'm going to leave that for another video. You can also use the caret library and use the feature plot function. In this case, I'm using the, the admission, uh, actually we don't need this, the admission to plot in different colors. Here is purple um, and blue. And also I'm, I'm plotting every variable with the other variables. So GPA and GRA and GRE are very much correlated. And, and, and again, I'm going to leave that problem of correlation for another video. And my favorite one, which is the, the function per panels in the psych psychology library. And I love this one because first of all, you have the histograms, which I like. You also have these uh, scatter plots in which you can see what happens between variables. And also you can have regressions automatically from, from the variables two by two. So basically this is a traditional regression between GRE and GPA. But this is actually a logistic regression between admit and GRE. So this logistic regression is for free. Okay. So let's move on. As I discussed, in principle we have some class imbalance. I saw that in, in this difference between between the beans in this histogram, and I'm going to leave that, but you should check for that, and maybe you, you can do some sub sampling of, of the ones, or sorry, of the zeros. And also you see some imbalance here in the predictor, but again, I'm going to leave that for another video. Next thing, I'm going to normalize the variables. As you can see here, if, if I take a look at GRE, the maximum value is 800, and the maximum value for GPA is 4. So if, if I want to make comparisons more reasonable between variables, I'm, I'm going to scale everything. So I'm going to divide GRE by the, its maximum and GPA by the maximum, and then store that variables, scale variables again in the admission data frame. So here we go. Now GRE takes the maximum value of one and GPA the same, okay? Next step in the, in the machine learning project is splitting data between training and validation. I'm not going to do any testing here. And I'm going to split 80% for validation, sorry, for training and 20% for validation. So p equals 0.8. And I'm going to use the sample int function. But you can also use this caret function, caret function, create data partition. And you're going to end up with the same result. So train. And again, what I'm doing here is take the original data frame and only take the indices that you have created from the sampling and store that in a new data frame called train data. And here the same. So remove, remember that the minus means remove, remove the indices in the train uh, variable and then create a new data frame called validation data. Okay. And now the, the, the interesting part of the video. So I'm going to show you three ways in which you can do uh, logistic regression. The first one is using the function GLM. And basically the syntax is the following. Take the first variable, the variable that I want to predict, and then write down explicitly all the predictions, all the features. In this case, I'm going to try to, to adjust admit versus GRE, GPA, and rank. Which data I'm going to use? Train data, and I'm going to use the family binomial, because remember that admit takes only two values, so this is basically a, a binomial random variable. 
So this is the simplest way to do that, or the, or the first way to do that. The simplest way to do that is remove the explicit mention to GRE, GPA, and rank. And if you remember, I only have four variables. So this dot means that everything except admit, so everything else in the data frame. So as you can see here, this is much more simpler. I can use the same data as here. So let's change this part. And this is going to produce the same result. And the last one that is going that is the one that I'm going to use in further videos is using the carrot library. So here everything in carrot is training basically. So I'm going to train using this data frame. This factor, actually I, I converted before this variable, admit versus everything else. And again, I'm going to recall carrot, which is the function that I'm using, in this case GLM, which is a shortcut for generalized linear model and I'm going to use a binomial random variable. So here we go. So my summary, and then the meat of the video. So what's interpretation of this coefficient? So let me go through this in detail. So I'm going to take the exponential of this coefficient. Why? Because when I, when I do this, uh, this regression, this logistic regression, basically this function is returning the logarithm of the odd ratio. So the exponential is the reverse function of the logarithm. So if I run this, I take an interpretation of that. Uh, a tip of, uh, you know, a pro tip. Whenever you see an odd which is below one, I, an advice is you to take one divided by that. So the interpretation is much more clear. So let's go, let's go to the interpretation. So what's the meaning of this 13? 13 means that if you want to be admitted in a rank one university, why rank one? Because the other, other factors are explicitly here. And then you, you have a, a GRE equals to zero and a GPA equals to zero. These are the odds ratio of being admitted. In this case, as I divided Y and divided by the exponential, so this is against you. So basically that means that, uh, let's say getting into a rank one university, university with GRE equals zero, so the worst that you can do, and GPA equals zero, is 13.5 to 1 against you. Okay? That's the meaning of that coefficient. If you want to translate this, this to probabilities, or the original one actually, so this divided by 1 plus the same variable gives you the probability of being admitted. So in this case, times 100, you have a 6-7% probability of being admitted in one university of rank 1 if you get a zero in the GRE and a zero in the GPA. The probability is low, but it's not zero. So basically they are admitting you because you're going to pay. Okay, sorry for the joke. Next coefficient. So what's the interpretation of this 0 0.2? And remember, now GR GRE, if you take the range of this, admit GRE, sorry, admission GRE, the range is between zero and one. So the interpretation of this coefficient, this 4.99, means that if you instead of uh, having a zero in the in GRE, you have the maximum the maximum score, which is one, then your odds are multiplied by uh, five. So in this case, you take this one times this one, and this gives you sorry uh, 4.99, and this gives you the odds. Uh, that you are admitted if you get the maximum score in GRE, taking the minimum score in GPA. Uh, okay, and again, I'm, I'm not explicit in saying anything about the rank, so to get admitted in rank, rank one university, and that is not so bad. So one divided by this number. Okay, let's copy this. Okay, it's almost three to one. So instead of having thirteen to one, now my odds have increased to three to one. If I now include information about GPA, imagine that I have the maximum score in GPA. Basically, I have to multiply all these coefficients. So let's do this here. Okay, so now, if I have the maximum score in GRE and the maximum score in GPA, the odds of being admitted in a rank one university are two to one. So I'm, I'm this is good. So actually, 2.1 divided by one, plus 2.1 times 100. So I have a 77% of being admitted, okay? Next, interpretation. So now let's go back to, to this categorical value. So let's assume that I have a zero in GRE 
and a zero in GPA. And now let's imagine that I want to be admitted in a rank two university. So let's copy this here. And let's copy this here. So if I multiply, sorry, if I multiply these two numbers, okay, these are the odds of being admitted in a university of rank two if I have a zero GRE and a zero GPA. As you can see here, uh, rank two universities are much more strict than rank one, much more exclusive, so my odds are against me. If I want to calculate the probability of being admitted in a rank four university if I'm not a rich man or my father is somewhere important, I have to multiply all these numbers. So 46 times blah blah blah. Sorry, actually, I have to divide. So my odds, uh, sorry, I'm doing something wrong. Uh, sorry, let me go back here. So these are the odds of being admitted. Sorry. And now my odds increases. In this, ca in this case, decreases because I'm using the exponential directly. Okay, times, times. So my odds are now pff, miserable. So one divided by this one. One divided by this one. So I have 447 against uh, for the versus one against me of being admitted in a rank for university, which makes sense because they are more much more exclusive. Okay, so this is basically the interpretation of that. So let's move on a little bit. Now I'm going to try to calculate the confusion matrix. So I'm going to call the predict function from the caret library. And I'm going to use the fit that I did before with the validation data and the type of this response. That means I'm getting a probability. So I can plot this again. And here you can see that I have a, pro a correlation of 0.43 between admission, true admission, and my prediction. Okay, th this is numerical, so I'm going to translate this to categorical one. So I'm going to use a threshold of 0 0.5. So everything, every probability above 0 0.5 is going to be considered admission, and below is going to be considered rejection. Okay, and now my confusion table is take the real values and then compare it with the prediction. Okay, if I print this, this is the confusion matrix. These are true negatives, true positives, false negatives, and false positives. Okay. And now you can use this uh, nice function from the caret library called confusion matrix. If I run this with this table, then I get all the information about how to how our classifier is performing. So my sensitivity is not bad, the specific specificity is not bad, positive predictive value is pretty high, and this is because as you can see here, I have a low number of uh, false positives, but my negative predictive value is uh, crazy. And again, if you want to have a good idea of how I'm performing, the Kappa statistic gives me a, a good idea about the classifier. So if, if this is one, my classifier is perfect. If this is zero, basically my classifier is the same as flipping a coin. And I'm uh, slightly better than flipping a coin, but not much better. Okay, so th this means that with this data set and with this model, I'm not going to predict, pr predict very accurately the admission and rejection in a university. And that's all for today.